Right, so the time has come to fish out my good old Baofeng. In fact, I've got several of these and I have a giant battery for one. Giant batteries up here charging, not sure if it's going to work out. But uh, I had a problem with this in that uh, the volume control wasn't working very well. Switch to FM radio here. We can probably do that. It wasn't quite working right. The solution was to give this a good scrub. I've got a couple more, I'll see if they do the same thing. And here's a couple more of these, and uh, we'll whack a battery on. This is one of the camo batteries. No, oh, that one's apparently flat. Let's try this one. These probably all need cleaning and stuff. They've been in storage a long time. Alright, we'll find out what's up with that one in a minute. Let's whack this one on. See here, pull that clip in. You can hear this one if we turn on is a bit cr crunchy. That's in the low volume. Let's turn to radio. Not quite right. Wriggle this around and scrub the potentiometer out. You might get better audio again. Much better audio. So that's the first little fix I had to do with these ones. Um, the next little fix is I had to clean battery terminals. Battery terminals are easy as give it a bit of contact cleaner and a bit of a scrub with either a rag or a uh, toothbrush or something like that. Don't forget these top two here. They're on the top of the battery there. And you probably don't need to really give them a scrub, just a quick squirt and let it dry off. Alright, after a quick squirt, let's try a camo battery again. Camo battery works. Nice clear audio when you turn it on. Alright. Let's try our other one. That one should go in firmly. This one's got no audio at all. Now, the audio problem, when you get this, this is a problem I found some years ago. I found with these, that it's usually just the switch. So you can hear it on that. There's a switch in here on the socket that determines whether it switches back again. And sometimes it's just the switch in that socket that goes. You can open them up and replace that. That's not the end of the world. Now, the primary reason I started this video is, is I've got a job to do. And uh, I wanted to use Channel 40 UHF and I wanted to use the hand mic, which um, I've got my uh, base station going up the top here. But you can see when you push this, it doesn't always transmit. Sometimes you've got to squeeze it really hard or in the right place to sometimes make it transmit. So I think the tactile button in this is a bit knackered. This is only a cheapy, so we're going to open it with the three screws and see what's going on inside. Now, before we get too far into this, the charging bases for these take 10 volt DC. I, once upon a time, used to modify these to take 12 volts, and some people went, oh, you just changed the plug and put a 12 volt one on there. No, they actually don't like taking 12 volts, they blow up. Um, what I actually did was put a 7810 linear regulator in here, which fits in and take away the 10 volt plug and just give them a 12 volt lighter socket plug in there. But a lot of people thought I was ripping them off when I did that and didn't know the modification. So I had to actually open the back of the charger and let them know. And this is a spare one with a bent pin. We've got multiple of these as well. Okay, we're gonna do a little bit of prep here. A lot of people don't know what this stuff is. This is Bluetech. It's a product made by Bostick. And it's spelled B-L-U-T-A-C, Bluetech. Um, and it's usable, like a reusable adhesive. Really handy. Um, it's a lot stronger than like plasticine or Play-Doh or whatever you might be thinking or silly putty. But uh, it does work really well for a lot of this sort of stuff. Let's see if we can get this open. Lift this up gently. There we go. Alright, now we can take our lever off or our button unit that needs to come out gently. I suspect the rubber membrane in here is degraded somewhat. Yes, the rubber membrane I think is just degraded massively. So we might actually just extract that completely um, and see if we can make it function without that. That's a little stopper there and there's a rubber bit stuck in there. Let me see if I can clean that out. Right, there'd been some uh, rubber had adhered to that. 
let's uh, zoom in a bit. So uh, this is our bit, that little nub in the middle there, that uh, is what contacts the tactile switch. Tactile switch being uh, this piece right in here, and uh, this is our rubber bit here which is uh, like sticky and solid all at the same time. So this may end up being actually just a really simple fix. And uh, we're just popping this back in with that rubber piece removed. I don't know if it will make contact. It probably won't. I'm not too worried about this being waterproof or not. This is my external mic. Uh, so that won't make contact. But what I think I have is some um, other tactile switches with a longer stop on the top. I could just put a piece of plastic in there too. That might be easier. Let me have a look. Now, littered through the bottom of my laser cutter is a whole bunch of little offcuts of little circular shaped things in various different sizes, some very tiny. This is a piece of acrylic. I think that would probably almost fit that gap nicely. It might actually just sit in there. If I do that right, put that in here. Okay, so it looks like, let's have a closer look at that tactile switch. I have to apologize if there's a bit of background noise. My neighbors have decided to uh, mulch a tree. So I think the bit that actually came out and stuck in here, I think that's actually the shaft out of the tactile switch there. At least, um, if that is, that's meant to go in that hole. So uh, I think we are definitely gonna have to replace that tactile switch. So uh, let me find my spares. All right, we have the board out here and we can see that it's a uh, right angle type tactile switch. I'm not sure I'll have a spare one of those, but I'll have a look around. All right, I found some spare parts, including a bunch of tactile switches in varying lengths, including some uh, massively long ones. Uh, however, none of these are the 90 degree type. I even have some giant ones in here. Um, you know what, I could actually just replace it with a button like this. That might actually be possible. I'll look at how the housing works. But uh, yeah, worst case, I may have to retrofit one of these and like glue it in sideways. Somebody's on channel 40 apparently. Right, I've given this some thought and uh, I think uh, this guy's gonna go. I'm not gonna bother mounting one in at 90 degrees. It's gonna be somewhat more of a pain in the rear. Although I have some with legs, actually now I think about it, I have some with legs I can hang around the side. You know what, I might chop this off, I'll try one side mounted, otherwise I'm going to put that on. Alright, now what we're going to do here, we're going to uh, tin the uh, legs on a tactile switch here. If I can do that in frame, it'll be all the better. Tin a couple of legs here, which we'll is put a bit of solder on them. Alright, now we're going to try and hang this off the board this way. Try not to bridge the pins together. Probably not my proudest solder job, but um, that allows us to bend that. And then if we do it right, we can put a bit of hot glue behind it and that might work. All right, hot glue mod done. And it clips in all right. So uh, we're gonna dodge this up because you know, it's gotta work for like two days. That's all we have gotta have it work for. And uh, if we were to put the shells back together, I can easily grab that with my thumb and push the button. We'll keep this and uh, we'll get the correct switch at a later date and uh, fix it properly. But for now, that'll work for a couple of days. Okay, let's try now. Okay, it works. And uh, let's go to um, channel 40 here. Test one, two, three, test one, two, three. Okay, it works pretty well. All right, and uh, we can like that. We're good with radio. Problem with these things is they're not real good at standing up. Let's find somewhere that's not in my Wi-Fi range. All right, actually, we'll probably get a copyright uh, strike from that. We won't do that for too long. Anyway, we have a working radio. There's one other thing I want to test. On the little uh, cheap ones here on the base, there is a little headphone plug here. I'm going to plug that into something a little special. In an ordinary world, I could just run an adapter, plug this lead in and plug it straight into that. 
but I want to have this clipped onto my belt while I'm riding in my eight wheel drive and uh, which is noisy so I want to block out some noise I want to hear what's going on here but be able to pick up this and talk so let's see if that works right so it comes through one ear only but it does work all right now can I talk through the headset with this let's go back to that testing one two three all right looks like it works we're doing well all right we're set up for a nice little thumbnail here I always like to use a thumbnail that actually exists in the video it irks me when people put fake thumbnails up so uh, if you see a thumbnail of my videos it's been taken directly from the footage that's in here um, so we're doing pretty well a little bow thing I even forget what the name of these is the UV 5R I have programmed uh, many many of these and worked on lots of them but I haven't done anything UHF for quite some time largely because it was mostly with my brother and uh, he's been gone nearly 10 years now here's a documentary on that if you get curious uh, drop me a line in the comments I'll give you a link in any case uh, we're gonna move on and uh, this is gonna do the job so we'll see you later